Hey guys, welcome back to the Simply Fitness Podcast. This is going to be part two of the basics of strength training. So last episode, if you didn't catch it, go ahead, pause this one, listen to the last one, because we're going to be building on a lot of the topics that we covered in that first sec, in that first podcast. So we talked about, you know, the basic movement patterns that are within every strength training program, as well as how to incorporate and create an actual strength training program. So go ahead, listen to that, start building your own strength training program. And today in this episode, we're going to be covering the principles of strength training. So I'll cover um, two, three different strength training principles that are going to control what exactly you're going to be doing in your strength training program, how to progress and how to see results in those programs, as well as we're going to talk specifically about how to progress, and specifically, how do I progress my clients moving forward in their strength training programs? How do you know when to progress and how to actually do that? So let's get into it. Let's get into the principles of strength training. So there are three main principles that we're going to be talking about this time. Um, One is kind of like a two-parter, but really three main principles here. So first one is going to be specificity. So with specificity in strength training, it pretty much means that your body is going to adapt to the specific stresses that you place upon it. So think about this in terms, an easy way to kind of understand this principle is to think of terms as an athlete. So if you want to be a runner, you're going to need to run in order to get better at running. So doing something like maybe swimming or cycling might be counterproductive to your goal of getting better as a runner. Though it might help, the specific stress that you're placing in your body is not the same. So you want to apply that specific stress for that body. That's why if you're training for some sports, you want to do specific exercises that are going to train you in that particular sport and the movements that you do in that sport. So when that comes to your strength training, we're not We're just practicing for the game of life. So if you want to get better at a specific exercise or a specific muscle group, you have to train that specific muscle group. If you want to build a stronger chest, you have to build, you have to include exercises that are going to build strength in that chest. Bench press variations, you know, push-ups, um, you know, whatever exercises that you want that are specifically towards the chest. If you want to build up your squat, squat variations, quad variations, glute exercises, those are going to be ways to build up that squat. It all has to do with specific movements there. So always think about when you're building your program, what exactly are your goals? And are those movements helping you towards those goals or going away from those goals? And obviously, not every exercise needs to be specific, you know, for a goal, maybe it's just to help build that overall body, um, or you just enjoy that exercise, that's okay, too. So second principle, principle number two is going to be progressive overload. This is kind of that two parter that I was talking about in the beginning, I really like to talk about it as one principle. So progressive overload is exactly what it sounds like, have to gradually increase your workload. So think about an easy way to think about workload when it comes to strength training is the amount of weight you're doing, the amount of sets times the amount of reps. And that's your total volume of work that you're doing for that exercise and for that workout. So over time, you want to be increasing that workload. So week one, two, three, four, you're gradually increasing throughout your program. This can be done in a variety of different ways. This can be simply increasing one of those three variables. So weight, sets, or reps. Those are That's an easy way to, act, to increase the workload. If you increase any of those numbers, the volume of work you're going to do is automatically going to go up. Another way that a lot of people don't think about is intensity. So either slowing down that tempo, increasing that tempo, of that movement, so doing it a little faster, doing it a little slower, that's going to help make the workout harder. It's going to create that more time under tension for those muscles, causing a little bit more stress there. 
So that's going to be principle number two. And three is individual. Maybe if I can talk today a little bit, individual individualization of your program. So everyone's going to respond to a program differently. That's why no one of my clients has the same exact program. They might be similar, but everybody's going to be different. Everyone's going to respond to exercise in a different way, different exercises in a different way. Our muscles are going to work slightly different. We all have different genetics. So it's going to, our body is going to respond differently to a workout program. So we got to find what works best for us. And it's going to take time to figure that out. And, you know, over time, what your body responds to for a couple weeks, a month, a year, 10 years might be different for the next month, two months, 10 years. So we always got to be adapting those programs and listening to our bodies and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. So those are the three main principles for strength training, specificity, progressive overload, individualization. So how does that incorporate into our program and how do we progress using these principles? So like what we talked about in that first podcast and again if you haven't listened to it yet i don't know why you're listening to this now still go back listen to that first basics of strength training part one. First, you're going to create your program based off the exactly the template that i talked about in that first podcast four to six week program is usually a good way to start i think four to six weeks is enough time to um, build that progressive o- overload you know get specificity with your workouts um, and some consistent progress here. Big believer of doing consistent workouts, not needing to change it up so, so much where every single day you're doing a different workout, a different you know exercises, things like that. Some consistency is good so you can see this progress. So I would stick with the same program for four to six weeks, you know, having those either two to four same workouts that you're doing for those four to six weeks. So over those two to four weeks, you want to look to gradually increase your workload. So exactly what we talked about in that progressive overload, we want to look for ways to increase that weight, sets, reps, or intensities during that workout. This is where tracking your workouts is going to be important because we can make notes about, okay, on Monday, that bench press at 95 pounds for eight reps felt easy. Maybe you can go up, make a note, go up next time or up, you know, or, you know, stay the same. Things like that. You can make those notes to yourself. So the next week when you go and look at your program, oh, how did I do last week? Okay, for the bench press. Oh, I have a little arrow there. Okay, maybe today I'll try 100 pounds and see how that feels for eight reps. So building up and tracking your workouts that way really helps you progress and see that progression And as well as to know when to progress, you're not going to remember week number one when you're on week number six. I guarantee that. Unless you have a photographic memory, you're never going to remember what exactly you did four weeks ago, six weeks ago, even last week. I can't remember what I did last week for my workouts, but I have a track, so I don't need to remember it. So I know exactly, okay, I worked out on Monday, Sunday, and Tuesday. Okay, let me look at what I did. Okay, perfect. Done. So track those and then look to find one to two exercises each workout that you can increase in some way whether it's one more rep one more set a little bit added to that weight you know maybe changing the intensity of that of that workout or of that exercise it doesn't have to be crazy amounts you know everyone is always looking to chase that pr everything like that it can be two and a half pounds, five pounds added to that exercise, one more rep going from eight to nine. That is progressive overload. That is increasing that workload. That's exactly what you're looking for. So don't look for these giant increases of 20, 30, 40 pounds. That might come in the beginning. It might, especially for some big movements like a deadlift or a squat, but don't chase that. Look for that progressive overload. Because what we're going to be working towards is progressively adding, 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 and then we're going to drop it down 
and then we got a new base, which is right here, instead of right here. And then we're going to add, 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 drop it back down, add, add, add. And that's how we increase there. So that brings up that next step. So once we have that progressive overload for that four to six weeks, we're going to start a new program for those next four to six weeks. Might have very similar goals, which is perfectly fine, but we're going to change up those workouts a little bit. We're going to look at, okay, what exercise were we doing? Okay, well, how can we change this? Okay, maybe we need to add some more sets, add some more reps, maybe add another exercise, change up the variations of the exercises, um, A, so the workouts don't get stale, and B, to hit the muscles just a little bit different. Maybe we're doing, instead of a dumbbell bent over row, we're doing a seated cable row. Maybe instead of a, you know, bench press with the barbell we're doing a bench press with dumbbells simple variation changes like that so then again we're going to start at that baseline but this time our baseline for some of these exercises might not be down here where we started last time it might be up here and then now we can start gaining a little bit more so when we get to that peak it's going to be a little higher than last time and then next time it's going to drop back down and that's how you build. You build up over time, building, starting from here, and you slowly work your way up. And you bring it back down, slowly build it up. You bring it back down because you got to let your body recover. If you keep building and building and building, eventually there's nowhere to go. If you add on five pounds, five, five pounds every single week to an exercise, that's going to be over 200 and 50 pounds, if I did that math right, in my head. That's a lot of weight to add to a lift in one year. If you're lifting, if you start benching 100 pounds and you went up five pounds every week, you're gonna be at over 350 pounds. That's a crazy strong bench press right there. So you see how unrealistic it is to increase by five pounds every single week or increase that weight. That's why we got to change the reps. We got to change the sets. That's how we're going to build up strength. Is it possible to get there? Yes, eventually. But over a year, that's that would be incredible growth. And if you can get there, awesome. But don't look to just add weight every single time. That's why we have to drop it back down. Let the body recover. Let the muscle rebuild and then work it back up. Bring it back down. Work it back up. Bring it back down. Work it back up. And that's how we do that. And that's why we track our workouts. That's why we see how the progress we're making so then we can know, hey, where do we do? Maybe we need to dial it back down a little bit more. Maybe we got to dial it back up. Maybe we're not going hard enough. So you can make those tweaks to that program, those, those small little tweaks that change the program from being good to great and from progress to being good to great. So... So there we go. That's how we're going to progress our program week to week as well as program to program. And this is a cycle that, that never ends. This holds true from beginning to end. You can do this month after month after month after month for years and years and years and years and keep building this progress up to get those results you're looking for. This is a never ending. This this cycle holds true for years and years. There's a lot more advanced techniques that you can do and add in to change this up. But this is simple as it gets. This is it it's for strength training. This is as complex as it needs to get for most people. And this is where 80% of people are going to live. They're going to live in this bubble of training specific exercises for their lifestyle and for the activities that they like to do. They're going to slowly progressively overload week in, week out, keep bringing it back down to that baseline every month to two months, bring it back up, bring it back down, bring it back up, bring it back down. And you doing the exercises that their body responds well to, as well as the exercises that they enjoy. And that's it. That's as the basics of strength training. That's as complex as we need to get it. There's no nothing crazy we got to do with it. That's as simple as it is. People like to make make strength training and weightlifting to be out to be this super complex thing. But really, the principles are super simple when you really think about it. And you're like, okay, that's how it is. Because it all 
It's all science at the end of the day, and it all relates back very simply to almost every other aspect of our life. When we think about it, the principles are super simple. No need to be complex about it, nothing, no need to get crazy about it and, you know, drive ourselves nuts. Let's keep it simple. If we want to get more complex, we can get more complex, but we don't have to. So let's keep it basic, guys. If you guys enjoy this, go ahead and make sure you leave a review. Love to hear you guys' responses. Ask me any questions you have about strength training. If you need help creating a program, shoot me a DM, shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to help you and get you started on some online coaching, get you started on a program, get you making those results. Uh, 2021 is right around the corner. You know, why stop? Why start in four weeks, three weeks when we can start right now? So go ahead and shoot me a DM. Let's keep getting after it, guys. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. And hope you guys come back for more next week. Bye, y'all.